Delegation number eight is regarding property located at 8109, 8123, and 8135 King George Boulevard. The applicant is seeking to amend the official community plan by redesignating the site from urban to multiple residential and increasing the maximum allowable density from 1.5 to 2.52 floor area ratio. The applicant is also seeking to rezone the site from one acre residential zone and single family residential zone to comprehensive development zone. The applicant is proposing to develop a six story mixed use building containing 100 residential rental units, 30 market and 70 non-market units and community services. Okay, I have um, persons not wishing to speak. Um, I have four that are listed in favor of this um, project and on the speaking order I have three names and they're all for this project. First one is uh, Lubora Yol uh, Morse, I think. Yes, madam. Good evening. Uh, I'm Lubna Musa. Uh, well, I'll be speaking on behalf of uh, Options Community Services. As you know, as it was rightly mentioned, that uh, they are planning to come up with 100 units. Uh, it's not only uh, regarding uh, like uh, 30 market rentals and 70 non-market rentals, but these would be at a, uh, at a price, this would be given at a price that would be below market rental rates. And when I say below, it would be as low as $375 a month for one bedroom. So looking at the housing crisis that we uh, currently are facing in Surrey and especially Lower Mainland, coming up with a project like this would definitely uh, be useful for people. Uh, besides, uh, I wouldn't get into more details of stuff, but I would definitely like to tell and draw your attention to this, that uh, the residents may also engage in number of uh, community services uh, that would be operating in the building, which is another plus point. And also it would support the existing B-Line Transit Service on King George, and that would be that would be helpful for future rapid transit. And uh, it, uh, I would also like to draw, your, the, draw the attention of respectable mayor and the council that uh, a, a waiving of the DCC was already done uh, by Langley, uh, so that uh, you know for affordable housing projects. Uh, and it should also be considered that this is a non-profit organization, uh, and it should be given uh, it should be treated on a different level uh, than uh, the private uh, private builder. That's all I have to say. Thank you so very much. Thank you for your comments, Madam. Mohammed uh, Ikai? Yes, sir. My name is Mohammed, and I'm one of the leaders of the Somalian community in the Surrey Newton area, and as well as I work as an outreach counselor with the Moving Ahead a program who actually um, targeted the vulnerable immigrants. I've been working in this uh, uh, area for this since 2012 until current. And uh, the reason I'm here today is that, um, as you know, Surrey, it becomes the, the saving heaven for all the immigrants to live, whether that is the lower uh, rent compared to the rest of the lower mainland or greater Vancouver, or whether the people always, you know, uh, recognize themselves with the rest of the immigrants and the lovely community and peaceful in Surrey. So um, one of the things I'd like actually to mention here is that Option is considered one of the pioneer and the leading uh, number of organizational in Surrey who actually targeting in those uh, families and low-income families and new immigrants. And they've been working in the housing issues for years and years, uh, yet their hands is very tight. This uh, project will be the milestone for the upcoming many projects if the um, mayors and the councils actually take it in special consideration for this, for allowing and giving an opportunity for those families to live in affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, Janice Boyle.
Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Janice Boyle, and I'm here representing Options Community Services. Um, we had some slides prepared. So maybe if I could just get a little bit of help with that, that would be great. We are so excited because it's been a long journey to get here uh, to be able to talk about our proposed six-story multi-use building that we're planning for the uh, intersection of 81st and King George. You can flip it. Next one. Um, just briefly about who is options. Uh, sometimes we joke that the list of things that we uh, don't do is much shorter than what we do do. Uh, but we've been providing a really wide range of community housing and support services in Surrey and the surrounding area for almost 50 years. And so those are just some of the examples of, uh, of the types of populations that we work with. Um, specifically in housing, we offer uh, a full range along the continuum as well, everything from emergency shelter all the way up to uh, managing a rental assistance for those uh, looking for space in the private market. We've heard some, uh, some comments tonight about the need for affordable housing. And uh, when we were preparing a presentation uh, for another group, we asked our staff throughout the agency um, if they could talk to their clients, didn't matter what program they were in, to see if housing, uh, if safe and affordable housing was a barrier for them in terms of meeting their goals. And within a day or two, we ended up with about 30 pages of stories uh, from our clients in every program. Didn't matter if it was our uh, Wally Work BC um, program or our uh, child care resource and referral. From everywhere across the spectrum, we had families uh, and individuals facing homelessness uh, affordable housing challenges. So these are just some of the stats um, that we put together uh, when we did a proposal for our CMHC grant. And, uh, and the social housing waiting list in Surrey alone is about 2,400 people right now. So it gives you an idea of how great the, uh, the housing needs are. I wanna introduce you briefly to some of our clients. And these are examples of the types of um, individuals and families who would be, we would be focused on with this particular project. So CB, she's 18 years old, she's on a youth agreement, she's an honor student, she just graduated high school, she's been accepted to UBC in the fall. Until she gets to UBC, uh, she uh, didn't have uh, housing secured. Where she was living had become unsafe. She received $700 a month that covers all of her expenses. And the different units that she was looking at, we couldn't think of a better word than sketchy. Um, and we had landlords that didn't want to rent to her. Uh, and shared accommodations, which is really what she could afford, are discouraged uh, by the ministry for safety reasons. Thankfully, a teacher stepped up, and she's living with one of her teachers now until she's able to move to student housing in the fall. So JF is a 38-year-old client of our WorkBC employment program. Uh, he lives with his 19-year-old son, who's in high school, uh, receives income assistance, and they're renting a basement suite. They started having trouble with their furnace, and, uh, and the odor emanating from there was causing uh, some illness. They talked to the landlord, and the landlord actually insisted that they keep their windows closed, so they weren't even, even able to ventilate the apartment. Uh, he became ill, uh, missed work, and lost his job. Uh, him, him and his son are sleeping in the living room, and they fear eviction if they ask the landlord to fix the furnace, and they've been looking for a new place to live for about eight months. And lastly, we've got JF. She's a 76-year-old staying with us in one of our transition houses. She only speaks Mandarin, uh, and she's been a Surrey resident for 18 years. Uh, and she has been working with our staff to try to find a place to live in the Lower Mainland since January. And at this stage, she's very discouraged because she wants to be able to stay in Surrey and can't find housing in her own community that she can afford. Next one. So what does deeply affordable and accessible mean? So with our 70 units that are deeply affordable, rents start as low as $375 a month. And it's, we do call this a shelter rate, but these are not shelter beds. These are regular apartment units. Uh, 30 of these uh, units are going to be market rent. 25 of the units are fully wheelchair accessible. And the focus for filling these apartments is going to be on women and children fleeing domestic violence, people with disabilities, uh, 
young adults, newcomers, seniors, and young families with uh, small children. And that's even with market units. Not all funding is, uh, or not all vulnerability is financial. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, madam. Um, second call. Anyone wishing to speak this bylaw? Third and final call. Okay, please come up the front. I wasn't yes. intending to speak uh, on this, but I will. Uh, uh, my name is Suki Sandu, and uh, as many of you know on council, I've been involved for the past year in a group called Wake Up Surrey. And one of the first organizations we met was Options. I don't think there's, I, I don't think there's many organizations in our city that help the vulnerable, help those in need, and are still doing things, you know, Sometimes they listen to people talk about townhomes and condominiums. They talk about marketing, you know, to the, to the less privileged and all that. Well, option does it, and they mean it. And I hereby, as, as a taxpayer of Surrey and a citizen of Surrey, fully endorse uh, this project and the, and the work that option does for our city. We're very proud of them, uh, of Christine and her staff. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments. Third and final call, anyone wishing? Okay, that concludes the public hearing part of our thing. We're into committee.